this is an addendum to a video I did a few days ago for Sexual Futurist. Uh, now, I have mentioned at the end of that video that for dating a geek, gamer, or nerd, you should set some ground rules right from the get-go and you can date them safely. So here they are. Well, an example of ones I'd recommend, coming from my experience. I call this the threshold uh, formula. Basically, you illustrate a circumstance. If I'm planning this, and you ignore it to do this, we're going to take this action. Whether that's, you're sleeping on the couch, uh, I'm leaving you, or I'm sicking my cousins who are into hunting on you. Good luck. It's all about explaining a situation and or more or more like a couple of them just to sh show where the correlations are. Conversely, however, it can go the other way. The gamer can say, look, if I get a life, once in a lifetime chance to meet with, talk to, work with somebody in an industry or a genre of entertainment or involved in something I'm very, very interested in who I might never ever get a chance to see again, uh, can I be, ex what is the maximum thing I can be excused from? Because ladies and gentlemen, my father always said to me that good relationships in business, your personal life, your profession, professional interests or your hobbies, your romantic interests or your uh, sexual interests, and I see romantic and sexual as completely different, these relationships hinge on communication and to a certain extent uh, your interactions will hinge on trust. This is something that was a very good YouTuber uh, was talking about. Anyway, what I'm talking about here is you can have in fact, I recommend this for a lot of relationships, not just ones with nerds, geeks, and gamers. Uh, you can have a constructive relationship with almost anyone. Just set your ground rules right from the get-go. As soon as you think it's going to go further, you've got to work out what the rules are. Good fences make good neighbours, let me tell you. There was a great example of a couple. They didn't necessarily have anything against each other, except they couldn't stand to live together. True story, true story. Loved each other to death. Um, you know, the stuff in the bedroom, great. It was just living in each other's spaces. They could never compromise. And they couldn't leave each other. So what'd they do? They bought houses right beside each other. So they were living together and living apart at the same time. It also kept the interesting que question of my place or yours up in, the, uh, up in the air, which I think actually added something to their relationship. Giggity. So, what I'm saying is, uh, you can date a nerd, geek, uh, a nerd geek or a gamer, and you can date somebody with a massively different cultural outlook on you. Talk about it. Communicate. Find where your boundaries are. Hell, this even works for BDSM in, a, in some ways. I knew somebody who uh, was talking to somebody online, and... Uh, the guy said, well, I like a bit of this. And she says, well, I might be into a bit of that. And he says, yeah. She, go she goes, um, all right, so what exactly are you into? And he goes over it. And she says, well, I'd probably draw the line around about here. I might experiment past that, but that's more or less where I'm willing to go. That's where I feel, that's about as far as I feel comfortable going at this time. And he said, that's fine. So I'm just saying to people, you can date somebody who doesn't have much of a social life, doesn't have much of an idea of where you're coming from, as long as you can communicate where you stop feeling comfortable and why, and be honest and forthright about it. You don't have to go into the history. You don't have to give them your life story. You just have to explain to them, that's where I draw the line. Anyway. I'm Ozzy Griffin. I hope this has been a good addendum. And, uh, yeah, fever my dad because uh, he, he was the one who taught me all this. Have a good one.